Welcome back. Yes, director was the answer. Well, David, um, of course, we always take your, your words from on high, but <laughs> today you've actually got words from the gods, even just a little bit higher still. Well, I thought after the last few episodes where uh, we were dealing in crime in the gutter with Yakuza and, uh, and mugging, let's look uh, to the heavens. And, in fact, uh, we're going to the Roman gods in this, in this case. Saturn was the Roman god of agriculture, which is why we have Saturnine. Unfortunately for Saturn, that means gloomy or morose. Perhaps he was having a bad season. <laughs> a bad season. Well, Saturn is the sixth planet from the sun, so it's more a, a reference to the roll. fact that he was the most distant and coldest planet. Now, then there's Mars, who was the Roman god of war, and Mars will now is warrior-like or relates to war. Jupiter, who was the, uh, the, the king of the gods and was the god of the sky. We have Jovial, uh, as in... Happy or because well, he was also known as Jove. <laughs> he was known as Jove, and in fact, a, a Roman curse was by Jove, which uh, back in the day would have been a, uh, a blasphemy. Um, then we have uh, Mercury, who was the messenger of the gods, and that's why we have Mercurial, meaning uh, volatile or fickle or changeable, because he was so quick. And, and the element Mercury moves in that sort exactly of way too. Exactly right. A quicksilver. It's very hard to pin down. He was very restless, but also he was the god of trade, which is why we have uh, commerce. Mercantile, uh, merchant, all these derive from Mercury. But the last one, I'm going to jump uh, jump the channel and look at the Greeks, and that is uh, the Greek god of the fields and the woods was Pan. And now that is why we have the word panic. And if you uh, wonder why, all you need to do is picture cattle when they're restless and how they stampede. So, in fact, the word panic also relates to the gods. <laughs> words from the gods, words from the messenger of the gods <laughs> in this case. Thank you, David. Let's have a look at those scores. Brendan is on six. David is on 13 points. And that means it's time for more letters, our next letter game. Brendan, would you make a selection for us this time? Thanks, Richard. Uh, Lily, let's start with a vowel, please. Thank you, Brendan. Starting with an E. And another vowel. It doesn't feel too good. Hi. There's something wrong with my tractor. Oh. And a consonant. It's oh, S. And another consonant. N. One more vowel. E. And another consonant. Thanks. S. And a consonant. C. And one more of those to finish off with. Thanks, Lou. And final letter X. Oh, tough finale. Thirty seconds. to finish, but um, how did you go? Uh, six. Richard. Six for you, David? Six as well. What was yours, David? Scenes. And yours, Brandon? Ceases. Ceases. Things have come to an end over here, David. Yes, well, it never ceases to amaze me. I was so excited by that uh, mix when it first began, um, thinking raciness and all sorts of potential there. Along came that X, and really it just uh, took the uh, wind out of the, uh, out of the sails. Um, both those uh, sixes are fine. They're seances as in a creepy meeting of, uh, for the medium, and excises is the word that uses the X, a type of tax. Thank you, David, but six points each to Brendan and David. Well, let's see if we can avoid the X factor in our next letter game. So, uh, David, perhaps you need to choose wisely. I'll try, Richard. Uh, start with the consonant, please, Lily. Thank you, David. Let's start with an S. And another one. P. A third consonant, please. T. A vowel, please. O. Um, another vowel, Lily. I. And another. E. A consonant again, please. M. Another consonant. R. And a consonant, please. And let's finish with a D. 30 seconds from now. Call the other cows. <laughs> How did you go, David? 
Um, seven. This story is... Uh, six, Richard. What was your six? Uh, despot. Mm, a little bit of a powerful ruler, David. Steroid. Steroid, David. Well done, David. Yes, steroid is a perfectly fine seven. And uh, imported is a possible eight uh, to be found there. So, a good seven points for David. Well, I think it's time to tackle a few more numbers now. So, uh, Brendan, what would you like to select this time? Thanks, Richard. Uh, Lily, two large and four small, please. Two large and four small. Thank you, Brendan. And starting with the smalls. Ten, seven, two and five. And the two large, 75 and 100. And the target to reach is 228. Let's head for the target. How close did you get? Uh, 222, Richard. Just six off, David? Uh, 228, Richard. You're spot on. Well, take us through your method, please. Five minus the two, Lily, is three. Five minus two is three. Times 75 is 225. Five, five to 75 is 225. Uh, 10 minus the seven is three. 10 minus seven is three. And add it on. Add that on, 228. So, right on target, David. Well done. Ten points to you. Lily, would you have done it the same way? Yes, same method. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Actually, you know, thinking of scores, Lily, last night our score totals ended up at 55 and 34, which are both Fibonacci numbers, aren't they? Yeah, it was amazing, wasn't it? And uh, I was just talking about Fibonacci numbers on the Monday. And um, if you recall, I'll just write them out the, again. The sequence goes 1, 1, 2... 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55. Now, another interesting application that I was thinking of for the Fibonacci numbers is um, converting miles into kilometres. So um, I'll give you an example. Say you wanted to convert 5 miles into kilometres. Uh, you look at the Fibonacci sequence, 5 miles, and you look at the next element in the sequence, which is 8, so five miles equals eight kilometres. That's fantastic. So does that apply further down? So is 34 miles 55 kilometres? Yes, yes. Why does it keep doing that? Well, it just happens to be the same conversion rate, which is approximately 1.6. So uh, it's just a, a nice convenient way of working out what, you know, converting miles into kilometres if you happen to know what the Fibonacci sequence is <laughs> off by heart. <laughs> as long as you can remember that, you can use it on your speedo. Yes. Very handy indeed. Thank you, Lily. Let's move into our next break now. And before that, of course, a word mix for you. This time, cool port. And the clue, follow the guidelines here and you should be fine. See you in a moment.